Hello and welcome to today's Rocksmith Developer Stream. I am your host and uh, the community developer on Rocksmith, Doug Lilly. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I think we all know, uh, most of us at least know the the we're, we're we're at home right now. We're all at home. Everyone's at home. Almost everyone's at home. We are at home uh, right now. I don't know where you are. Uh, I'm hoping many of you are at home, uh, safe and happy and uh, warm. I guess I don't know. It's summer eh, almost. Is it summer? Who knows? I looked out my window. I thought I saw a butterfly. Uh, but it was a piece of trash. Um, it was still pretty for a moment. Uh, but welcome to today's Rocks with Developer Stream. Uh, today, I'm very happy to have uh, back with us as a community guest, who you'll see later, uh, Timothy Porter, uh, who was with us during the uh, Rocksmith 50th year anniversary performance at Slims. We'll talk about that some more later on. Uh, we also have some guests uh, that we'll see very soon who will be live with us. Uh, right now, I am live. Um, oh, and they're on the screen. So uh, we can go ahead and say, say hello to our guests, uh, Greg Studley and Adrian Komala. Welcome. I, I already happening? messed that up. <laughs> How's it going? Komala. Good. Komala. I just asked him uh, how to pronounce his name after knowing him for two years, <laughs> and uh, I got it wrong my first try. So welcome to the stream. <laughs> Americans <laughs> always do. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It's true. Uh, later on, uh, just to let you know, uh, we are going to have some raffles, uh, some, some giveaways. Uh, that will all be handled when it gets here. Uh, but now let's uh, let's talk to Greg and Adrian. If you have questions, make sure you reach out to UB Jurassic in the chat. He's taking your questions and getting them to us throughout the course of the stream. Uh, so that's UB Jurassic. Uh, so make sure you reach out to him. If you have questions now, I'll finally allow Greg and Adrian to say hello. At the same hello. time, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, Greg, so the, you are a uh, musical content developer, is that right? That would be the title. And uh, Adrian, you are, uh, I see, uh, Data Warlock. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm working with HR to get my job title changed. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Good. We're, we're, Good. We're getting there. It's some red tape, but, you know. I'm proud. Uh, do you have to go, is, is there like a, is there a, a specific path you have to go to, to to reach Warlock status? Well, really, it's about getting the hat, you know? Like, I've got hat the up. beard, but now I need the hat, <laughs> and, and, you know. You have the hat, you can't show off the hair. It's a, I don't know, it's a Yeah, it's a complicated situation. It's, okay. It's, it's, it's a hard life that is mine. Good luck uh, working, <laughs> working your way through that. Um, Trish, over the past few streams that we've done like this uh, at home, uh, partially live, partially recorded, uh, I tend to start uh, just by, by asking uh, recently, Adrian, what have you been listening to? What has, have you been listening to to kind of get you through your days? Uh, so I've been on this big uh, kind of 70s jazz funk kick for a few weeks now. Uh, I had a person that I know through the internet that posted a link to some very interesting sounding stuff. And so I kind of like went down one of these rabbit holes of artists like uh, Lonnie Liston Smith and Idris Muhammad are the two that have kind of stuck with me. Um, okay. And it's really interesting stuff. It's a scene that I had no idea existed, um, but it's a lot of like kind of very kind of psychedelic, but very funky kind of jazzy stuff. Really, really kind of cool. Great, fantastic musicians. Um, I, mean, I think Lonnie Liston Smith like played with Miles Davis for a minute, like so. It's that's the caliber of musician we're talking about, um, and this stuff's fantastic. It's super fun. It's kind of like it's 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 got a lot of that kind of you know harmonic complexity of jazz that you'd kind of expect, but it's still fun enough that it's easy kind of to listen along to. It's kind of like danceable if you're one who dances. Exactly. Yeah, it's got a little bit of 70s synth corniness in it, but in a way that sure. I find very endearing. So, uh, so I highly recommend checking that out for anyone that's in the mood for for a little bit of ray of musical sunshine. Sure, sure. Thank you, Adrian and uh, Greg. You, uh, we, 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 we talked about this. You, you haven't been listening to much. Uh, instead, what have you been doing? Well, I mean, you know, I listen when I can, but uh, I, I've been a, I've been on a kick since the beginning of the year, uh, and I've stuck to it so far of producing one song a month. Um, okay. and, and so far I've got four of them done. So, uh, I am, I am on track at this point. All right. Um, and that's just the amount of, of, you know, time that eats up of, okay, well, first week I'm going to go ahead and compose the song. Okay. Now I'm going to, you know, go ahead and start recording it and arranging it. Okay. Now I've got all my parts. Now I've got to mix it. Okay. Now I've got to master it and throw a video together so I can put it online and make <laughs> sure it gets onto all the networks before the month is done and get it up on, you know, Spotify and everything else. And, uh, it pretty much eats up all my time, okay. but I'm totally digging it because I haven't produced music like this, uh, really ever before where it's just constant. You finish one song and you just got to start the next one. 
And, so are you, uh, are you are you releasing these kind of as you finish them once per month, or are you are you collecting them? No, I, I am I am releasing them to try and kind of make regular release of them. They're all up on my you know Facebook page and website and everything. But um, I, you want to give us a name for this in case no, somebody wants to? No. <laughs> okay. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. Uh, no. So the so the first song I released was a song called "What It's Like," uh, and kind of kind of comes from walking the streets of San Francisco, where you see all different walks of life. And some people are walking around in business suits and others are, you know, sometimes living in a box. And uh, you just really never know what it's like to be in someone else's shoes at that point. So sure. um, it's, it's kind of a perspective song. Uh, and then in February, I released um, a cover of I Am The Walrus with a good friend of mine, Steve Ginsberg. Uh, so he and I released that tune together. Um, then I did a song called Echo in My Mind, which is uh, an, another original one. And then I had just released uh, a couple days ago my uh, fourth one, which was another cover of Pink Floyd's Great Gig in the Sky. And no, I did not sing it for anyone who knows the song. <laughs> uh, it was kind of like a, like a slide guitar uh, remake of the tune. And uh, did, did, do, you want, do you want to actually tell people where they can find it? Oh, I thought you were asking me what they were. Yeah, no, uh, no, no, no. So, well, both. Uh, they're they're all on YouTube. They're all on my website, gregstudleymusic.com. They're on my Facebook page and my uh, music Facebook page, Greg Studley Music. Um, they're on a lot of the platforms as well. Uh, I didn't have a chance to get Great Gig in the Sky up there yet, but uh, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon, you know, all the regulars. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Sounds exhausting. Thank you very much. <laughs> it is. It, it, no, I mean, it's like, well, just because, like, I when I write stuff, it's, it's, you know, I sit down and I just noodle until something comes, and sometimes that happens quickly, and sometimes it doesn't. So, writing under a time constraint is something I've never really done, but it's always scared me a little bit because I'm just like, you know, if nothing comes, then I, I feel like, you know, I'd have to settle for something that I'd be not satisfied with. So it's, it sounds stressful. It, so it is, but it. You. But but it's good at the same time because I, I'm the type of person who I keep wanting it to get perfect, and I, I and it's it's not right yet. I got to keep trying, and without a deadline, that that could go on for months. I could just hold right. on to a song for a year, and be like, well, that organ part in the right channel that you can kind of hear, I might need it to be one dB louder. I just I got to <laughs> I got to see what that's gonna sound, and I can get lost in it like that. This uh, this is good for me because it get, it forces me into a mindset of. Yeah, that's good enough because pretty much anyone that hears it isn't going to hear all the little nuances that I'm trying to pick out of it. So, yeah, it's fine. And I send it out there and, you know, nobody's yelling back at me going, dude, the organ. Like, you know, where where Yourself, is it? I, I, go I, I yell at Greg <laughs> about his organ parts on the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Adrian, uh, do you are you currently currently being uh, just in, in the in the general present time, <laughs> maybe bef right before uh, March? Uh, are you playing with people? Like, are you, are you? Yeah. Actively... Yeah. So, well, so this, uh, my, my band and I were in the middle of finishing a record when all of oh, this no. started. Oh, so we're oh, like no. two guitar, I owe two guitar solos. And then, you know, we had to, had to go <laughs> lock down. So that was a little unfortunate. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I, I'm in a little band. I mean, it's something to just do it for fun. You know, sure. it's sure. a couple friends. Um, but it's a good time. I mean, we've got a record that that's, I said almost done, so hoping to get that out there uh, sometime soon. Um, and and yeah, it's just I mean it's fun because it's the first time that I've you know made music uh, without it being the be all end all. You know, a lot of the time I was in bands when I was younger, and it's like this is what I'm gonna do for my life is make music. So it always felt like this like to to There's Greg's point about it, it needs to be perfect. So you have to like you know and just doing it now. It's like we're just doing it for fun. It's like we're gonna finish the record we're probably going to do like a vinyl pressing or something i'm going to send a copy to my mom and that's going to be i'm at that nice. point i'll be happy you know what i mean nice. like i want one and, <laughs> I'm like, yes, I'm man. i mean anyone can have but it's you know what i mean it's just like it's it just there's a lot of pressure that comes off from from not having to 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 worry about um you know it being the the my entire universe so so it's kind of so nice. when when you when you when you are writing adrian uh because i've i've spoken to to greg on stream uh a number of times about his process uh do you tend to write as a group with the rest of your band or <laughs> Are there like one or two of you who are doing the the majority? Yeah, it, it, it's 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 a group thing. So I've always my my entire life I've always been a big believer in the like 
I've never written something that hasn't been improved by bringing it to the band and everyone contributes to sure. it, right? So that's usually what the process happens like is that one of us will come to the studio with either a riff or a small set of riffs and then together we kind of workshop that into a song yeah. um uh do, and, do loud notes on each other's like parts like do, are, are you okay with offering and accepting suggestions oh yeah yeah ab absolutely no well it's because i mean part of it is that like it's it, so the band is kind of a punk rock thing but we all come to punk rock from a very different place like we have sure. very different like there's stuff that i love that like our singer hates you know and so like it'll we'll, we'll come into like i'll come in with parts and he'll be like no I'm not doing that and vice versa <laughs> and that's fine i mean it helps that we're all friends like we knew yeah. each other like the whole band we knew each other before we started playing music together so it's it that makes it much less you know there's it, we don't take it personally and like i think we're all we've also all been playing music for long enough that we understand that that just happens you know sure. what i mean like you're gonna have differences of opinion with the people that you're writing with and especially in a band like this where it's not you know um uh you know like this huge you know thing it it, it 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 makes it easier to take that criticism and thread the other thing that that i think that we do a lot that that has been really helpful is having a like you know you will sometimes have that reaction of like i'm not feeling that part i don't think this is good but then there's also we do always have this clause of like just trust me on this. Like if you have a, if you have a thing you're trying to do, cause sometimes you have a thing you're trying to do and not everyone yeah. hears it. And so like, we do have this thing where like, if one of us goes, Hey, just trust me on this. And that has worked very well for us in the past. Good. So that's kind of how the process Good. works. So it is very collaborative, but we like to have a seed of some kind. Cause I can't, I have a hard time coming to practice and being like, Ugh, gotta write a riff, you know, right. like can't do that. But if we have a starting point, it actually flows really, really naturally. Sure. And uh, Greg, you know, I, I will talk to you a little bit about this. Uh, so your music, you, you tend to be the, the primary creator, but you do have other musicians jump in on parts, correct? Uh, Am I right on that? It, it depends. Um, so for the stuff that I've been working on most recently, um, I've been playing all the guitar parts, bass parts, keyboard parts, and doing all the vocals. Um, I was fortunate enough to collaborate, like I said, with my friend Steve for uh, our version of I Am The Walrus, uh, and he took on the vocals and uh, the bass part. So that was cool to kind of get someone else uh, in there with it. Uh, sometimes I actually like having female vocals uh, to back up my tunes as well. And uh, my falsetto just doesn't sound that good, let's be honest. So um, there's a good friend of mine who I've worked with in bands that I sometimes get her in to do it. And uh, in this remote environment, uh, I'm just doing it remotely. I'm just calling people up and being like, hey, yeah. I know you're not doing anything because I'm not doing anything. So you got time to lay down some tracks for me. And um, the cool thing is a lot of people are very open to collaborate right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. I do I do a, pretty much a lot of the writing. I even hand them what I think their part should be. But then I'm like, here, you know, if you can do something Soon. close to this cool and if you feel some need to deviate, send that to me too. Okay. You just, you know? It takes. Hey, give me a few takes. Yeah, you don't you don't want to really step on people's creativity. If you're gonna ask them to contribute, you don't wanna be like, Well, contribute what I told you to contribute and right. nothing more, nothing less. Right. Yeah, With like, know, they kinda music. Yeah. Ultimately, that that was ultimately the question I was getting to. So I'm I'm glad uh, glad you answered and answered in that way. Cool. Uh, I think it's uh it's just about time. Uh, it's almost time to say hello to Tim Porter. Uh, but first, uh, I want to say thank you to Adrian and Greg. Uh, we will be back with them uh, very soon. But right now, we're gonna do our first Ernie Ball prize pack giveaway of the stream. So if you are watching live. Please uh, read what UB Jurassic is saying in the chat for your chance to win one of these Ernie Ball prize packs. Uh, right now, we're giving one away. We will give another one away later on in the stream. If you win, uh, you're going to get everything that you see on your screen. That's uh, two sets of regular slinky guitar strings, uh, one set for your six string, one set for your four string bass. You're going to get a dozen Everlast picks from Ernie Ball. Uh, you are going to receive three Spectrum Plectrum picks from us here at Rocksmith, uh, one black Ernie Ball guitar strap, and a package of Ernie Ball Wonder Wipes as well as a peg liner, all of that from Ernie Ball. Uh, these will be sent out once we are back in the studio. Uh, we were asked early on, right before the stream started, uh, if we knew 
uh, when we would be back in the studio. And at this point, uh, we, I don't have a firm enough date to give you uh, to let you know when these are going out. But we are saving your uh, information so that when we get back in the office, uh, we can ship them out as quickly as possible. Uh, we still will be shipping internationally. So if you're not in the US, uh, you can enter and win. Uh, but if you do win, uh, please uh, split up your address line by line uh, when you receive a whisper from UV Jurassic to get your information. Again, that's a uh, full name, telephone number, and shipping address. Uh, so if you win, keep an eye out for UV Jurassic uh, to get that information from you. Right now, uh, let's go ahead and uh, we are going to first visit with Tim Porter. Uh, Tim came down. This is before I was in San Francisco with uh, the rest of the team but came down for the Rocksmith fifth year anniversary, uh, the live at Slim's. Uh, he played a, a, a show uh, along with Audrey Sheeta and Miles Bristow. Uh, that happened, uh, honestly, right before I was on the project. So it was a, it was a big deal when I came on to see uh, all these people be able to, to come in together and play live for people uh, for the first time. Uh, so we're gonna say uh, hi to Tim, who will be performing uh, a song by Extreme. After that, uh, we're gonna check in with Brian Turner to see what is new on his horizon. So please uh, enjoy this from Tim Porter and we'll be back live after that. Hi, I'm Tim of Timothy's Music on Twitch and on other platforms, Timothy's and other places. I am from Ireland and I am currently living in the USA with my delightful wife and my adorable little cat, Sasha, who now has an emote on my channel, which is amazing. Some of you might recognize me from the Rocksmith 5th competition, which I won alongside uh, Miles Bristow and Audrey Sheeda, two delightful people who are still, I believe, playing Rocksmith. I know Audrey definitely is. I haven't seen Miles about, but uh, that's the way of it. I stream on Twitch as often as I can. I recently became an affiliate, so now I can get subscribers and I have emotes and it's all very exciting and very interesting. I'm going to be playing two songs today. One of them is going to be Over the Hills and Far Away by Gary Moore because I'm Irish and I feel some loyalty to that cause. So that's what I'm going to be doing. And the other song I chose uh, was inspired by a quote from a great man who said, if you don't have the DLC, you can't embarrass yourself. So today I'm going to be playing Play With Me by Extreme, which is a very tricky song. So I'm a believer in improving myself in most aspects of my life as, as much as I can. I do that on guitar by uh, learning songs that I can't quite play up to speed yet. Uh, I started doing this because of a brief Twitter interaction that I had with the delightful Dan Amrick, who's probably somewhere in the chat. Uh, we had a brief uh, correspondence where I posted something I, can't, I couldn't find it I wanted to bring it up and read off the exact words but I couldn't quite find it but uh, he said something along the or I posted something along the lines of like oh this this song I'll never be able to play it and he said oh no you you can't play it yet <laughs> so don't be a naysayer be a, a not yet sayer can't play it yet the guitarist on this track is Nuno Betancourt, who is considered by myself and many others to be one of the most underrated guitarists. On this track, he has, again, blazing solos, some sweet, sweet riffage, and every technique in the book, which comes together to build this incredible, fun blast off of a track with a little bit of classical music in there. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy my attempt at playing this song, which I usually play slower because I've been practicing, but for your entertainment, I I did my best. <laughs> enjoy. Alrighty. So the first track I'm going to be playing is Play With Me by Extreme because I really, really, really love this song. It starts out and ends with uh, Ronda Walla Turka by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, which is available in the Boxsmith pack. <laughs> At a much more reasonable pace. At a very reasonable price. Run to walk to your nearest DLC vendor.
there you go. Rondo Ella Turca, with a little bit of extreme squeezed in the middle. How did I do? Hey, 85%. Excellent That's an A where I come from. <laughs> hey everyone, it's Brian Turner, also known as UB Jurassic, also known as the guy that tells Moobot to give you prizes every week. Uh, it's happening, it's live. The UB Jurassic All Acoustic Stream, it's here. Sit back, relax. I'm gonna put this back down because that's not actually why I'm here. Uh, so recently, I finally decided it was time to get myself my first electric guitar. Up until now, I've been playing Rocksmith with this acoustic guitar and a microphone, and I figured I deserve the upgrade. So I thought I'd share that experience with you guys this week. So without further ado, here's the unboxing. And this is my new Gresh G2210 Streamliner Junior Jet Club. It's in a glossy finish called Gunmetal, has two chunky Broadtron humbucker pickups, a NATO body and neck, which is similar in characteristics to mahogany. The neck itself is bolt-on, has 22 medium jumbo frets on a laurel fingerboard. It has a master volume and a master tone control, a three-way toggle switch, and a tortoise pick guard. Overall, I love the look of this guitar. It's minimalist, and it's one of those things where I saw it online, and I just fell in love with it, and I had to have it. And that's about it for me, guys. Uh, I'd plug this up to an amp and play for you guys, but that's yet to be purchased, so if you wanna let me know uh, your amp suggestions, uh, mods you would recommend to upgrade this guitar for the future, or if you just wanna see high quality photos of this guitar upload online, uh, feel free to hit me up on Twitter, which is BT underscore Hawk guy. Uh, and I'm more than happy to talk with you guys, more than happy to share. And that's about it. So I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. And welcome back uh, briefly live. Uh, I am still your host and community developer on Rocksmith, Doug Lilly. Uh, right now, uh, I would like to say thank you to Brian Turner, aka UB Jurassic, for uh, letting us take a look at your brand new Gretsch. Congratulations on the new guitar. And uh, thank you again to Tim Porter for the first of two songs we're going to hear. Right now, uh, we want to give away five copies of the Joy Division song pack on Steam. So if you're in the chat live right now, please listen to UB Jurassic for instructions on how you can win one of five copies of the Joy Division song pack that is uh, that includes the songs Transmission, Disorder, and Love Will Tear Us Apart. Uh, so yeah, good luck on that. If you're a bass player, uh, I, I definitely recommend you uh, you enter this one if you uh, are on Steam. Uh, so good luck on that. Right now we're gonna uh, visit Tim Porter one more time uh, to look at a uh, Gary Moore tune. After that, uh, Ellison Cruz and I, I assume that's with the the RifferPeter.com team uh, have put together another community video. Uh, so we will take a look at that. Want to say thank you uh, for putting that. Again, that is all. Uh, that is all you. We're just we're just happy to uh, be able to show the rest of you what you have done together. And after that, we'll be back live with Greg Studley and Adrian. Uh, so here once more is Tim Porter. Hey. So. One costume change later. You may have noticed during that track that some of the colors of the notes might be a little bit different, but that is because I am colorblind and Rocksmith has a colorblind option which allows you to switch around the colors of, I think one or two of the strings change. I can't really tell, so don't ask me. It's very cool of Ubisoft to add that as a feature because without that, I would never have been able to play Rocksmith. I try to play along with other streamers, Sometimes, like I'll plug my guitar in and play along with uh, others, but sometimes it's really, really hard to tell between, usually the G string and the B string are most difficult to tell apart for me. My current guitar is 
a Fender Stratocaster, which has been my baby since coming over here to the United States. It is the first guitar that I have ever owned that is worth more than a pittance, basically. And I've been playing for 10 years, and I've only had it for a little over a year now. So it feels very nice to have such a quality instrument in my hands these days. I also play a little bit of a bass. I have a Ibanez GSR 200B, which has a, a fancy little uh, EQ boost, which I never use because it gets a little fuzzy. So the second track that I'm going to be playing is Over the Hills and Far Away by Gary Moore, who is one of the most famous Irish rock musicians alongside the likes of uh, Rory Gallagher. But similar to Rory Gallagher, he didn't get much radio play over in Ireland while I was growing up, despite being born in the 90s, which is very much like early 90s was his heyday. And like I never heard it on the radio, which was terribly sad. But these days there's been a revival and uh, a push for Irish music to be put back on Irish radio. So good job, Irish people. So this track tells a little snapshot of a person's life and it uses aspects of traditional Irish music for quite a bit of its melodies. So in Irish music it's traditional to tell a story with it. So we have the storytelling aspect and it uses very emotional language in the in the lyrics. So that's that's cool. It also uses a lot of devices that are used in Irish music throughout its melodies such as repeated notes using different um, note values quarter notes and eighth notes, or crotchets and quavers as I know them. It also uses a lot of ornamentation such as trills, turns, and cuts, which are all very, very frequently used in traditional Irish music. So that's it. I'll get on with playing it now for you all, and I hope you enjoy Over the Hills and Fire Away by Gary Moore. Alrighty. So the next song I'm going to be playing is Over the Hills and Fire Away by Gary Moore. Over the Hills and Fire Away, Teletubbies come to play. <laughs> This one starts off with no guitar, so I'm gonna sing along, which I do on my stream, so hopefully you enjoy it. They came for him one winter's night, arrested he was bound. They said there'd be no robbery, his pistol had been found. Oh, 
sure as the rivers reach the sea, back in his arms again she'll be. Keychain. Funny little track, that. A little bit of a snippet of a story. Weird story. Guy goes to jail. Somebody frames him for some crime. And he can't admit to it because he slept with the wife of his best friend. But then the whole rest of the song is about, like, Superb performance. back in his arms again she'll be. But it's it's his best friend's wife. Anyway, that's, <laughs> that's Over the Hills Far Away by Gary Moore. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed my singing. So that's all from me. Uh... I am um, Timothy's music, as it says up there. I, it's over here on my monitor. Anyway, uh, that song had a lot more pinch harmonics <laughs> as well as a technique to use. And it also used a whammy bar a lot, which Rocksmith has a hard time doing. But I think the lads did a good old job of making sure you knew that you could hold on to the the uh, harmonics the whole way through. So, yeah, uh, I am also on a podcast, Creature Club podcast, if... That is something that you fancy. We talk about monsters and Dungeons and Dragons. But that's me. Rocksmith is amazing. I thank you to everyone. Shout out to Dan Emmerich and Doug and Sam and all of the Bryans, every single one of them. And to at Bisco Bid for always <laughs> referring to me as famous Tim, even though it's been like four years. Alright, thank you so much. I've been I've been Tim. Hope you enjoy the rest of the stream. Bye. So this song is called Carry On My Wayward Son. And this is for our dads, for our cool dads. My dad's a shredder. Carry on my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are done. Lay your weary head to rest. Don't you cry no more.
and welcome back to the live portion of today's Rocksmith Developer Stream. I am still Doug Lilly, and with me uh, live right now, I believe, uh, we have Greg Studley and Adrian Comelay. Welcome back live. And, and I want to thank uh, all of the people uh, in that community video. First off, I want to thank Elson Cruz for uh, organizing it, putting it together. Uh, and I want to thank all the people in the video for carrying on and uh, bringing us that music. Uh, you I had noticed, to. I, I had. I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't not do it. Um, uh, in that video, I, I did notice Death Johnson, who we had on stream last week. If you missed last, last week's stream, uh, you can find it on YouTube or you can find it uh, on the video section here on Twitch uh, at Rocksmith Game. Uh, also, I, I spotted uh, a guest that we should have two weeks from now, uh, which we'll hear more about um, probably in a couple weeks. Uh, but Greg, Adrian, welcome back. Uh, is everyone unmuted and ready to go? Oh, yeah. I hear you. All right, cool. Uh, uh, recently, Adrian, we released an infographic. Yeah. You're a data warlock. Yes. <laughs> that means you had a, uh, a very big hand in, yeah, uh, I, I in helped out. collecting that information. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to talk about a couple of the points on that. First off, uh, at the time that it was collected, I, I know I got the date, like the, the cutoff date for that, but that was probably the, the end of February, February 30th, something. Like that. Or that sounds of, right. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Of, Actually, no. I pulled date. No, I pulled data through you through the end of March because that's when yep. we ended DLC. So. Uh, so at that point, uh, we had had collectively in 2014, uh, one billion three hundred fifty-six million seven hundred forty-eight thousand nine hundred and twenty-two uh, individual song plays. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of songs. Uh, I did not do the math to figure out the the rough estimate of how how much time that would be playing, but it's a lot. Yeah, years, yeah, at least. yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it, it's it also depends on the length of the song you're playing. You know, yeah, yeah. to if it, if to it was all the people that just played "Carry On My Wayward Son," as I'm sure right. they're aware. Um, if it was Bob, you know. Uh, yeah. A exactly. Days. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, thank you very much, Adrian, for uh, yeah. helping with that. Uh, we had talked a little bit about the um, uh, one of the one of the topics I want to bring up with that within that infographic, uh, left-handed players uh, versus or. We, we 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 had verses uh, in, an, in an earlier draft of the infographic, mm -hmm. but we didn't want to make it combative because that, that's not the point. The the information was verses, but the people that the information represents, uh, we're not trying to get to butt heads. So uh, left-handed players or right-handed players in Rocksmith, uh, we had only 3% uh, left-handed players in Rocksmith versus an average of, I think, about 10% of the... the sort of population yeah. in general um and that was that was interesting to us when we when we got that information so uh, i wanted to talk about that a little bit because i know anecdotally i know of a, a number of players both uh professionally and friends of mine uh who are left-handed but play guitar or bass right-handed yep. um why might that be I mean, I think there's a variety of factors. My my assumption, my understanding, but I mean, I'm right-handed, so not maybe not the most qualified person to answer. But I think a lot of the time it can be just a pain to find a left-handed guitar. I'm assuming there is an additional cost that comes with anything that is rarer than the alternative, um, and it, it just you know it simplifies things because you like there's you know yeah 10% of the population are left-handed, but the world is still very much set up for right-handed people. And I think a lot of that applies even to the equipment we use when we're making music. Even if your guitar is set up to play left-handed, there's a lot of other stuff that is just meant to be used by right-handed people. And so I understand why it would seem like more hassle than it's worth. Um, yeah. I see this a lot with drummers that are left-handed. They go, no, I'm just playing right-handed because yeah. left -hand playing drums when you're left-handed you become a huge pain for anyone you play a show with. Right. You know, so, 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 uh, the, the sound person looks at the stage and they look at the drum setup and they say, no. no <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you, so like, I mean, drums, it's extreme because you have to reorient the entire kit. Um, yeah. But I think there's probably a lesser version of that that also applies to, to, to guitars and, and, and basses because um, yeah, it's just the world is not set up to make that as convenient as it could be. So I could see myself as, as someone that, you know, I could see myself if I was left-handed going that route. So, yeah. Craig, what about my you? thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Let's hear your thoughts. 
No, I, you know, um, so I, I, I did music teaching for years. Um, yeah. And the truth is, especially for people buying for the first time, there's not nearly as much of a market to find that instrument, like Adrian was saying. But the other thing is, you know, when you start playing a guitar, it's so foreign. There's there's nothing compatible in your life prior to that point where you can be like, oh, this is kind of like this. Like, it's just, it's, it's totally right. foreign to you. So uh, I've taught left-handed people on right-handed instruments, and it's just as awkward for them as it is a right-handed person on a right-handed instrument. It's just sure. the mechanics of it, you have to learn from ground zero. And so I don't, I, I actually have seen people that play, uh, that are left-handed, that play right-handed instruments and they play great. In fact, uh, Anthony Martinez is left-handed, oh, but plays yeah. right-handed instrument. And he doesn't seem to have a problem. So it's it's yeah. one of those things you can you can certainly learn your way uh, through it, and it's not a real big disadvantage. Not not that I've ever noticed. I, right. I think the challenge probably comes from if you know if it's something you're used to doing with your left hand, and then you transition to try to do it with your right hand or vice versa. That's hard. Yeah. But if you start, if to to Greg's point, when it's something that's that foreign, like you just start doing it and you you don't have any preconceived notions and any muscle memory really built in that you have to fight against to be able to to, to master it so I think my um had a, had a had a good friend in college who's also a bass player and uh he was a lefty who played righty and his his explanation was basically i wanted my dominant hand my more dexterous hand to be on the fretboard so it could travel easier uh and that made sense to me uh just from a from a like a, a logical standpoint but in practice trying trying to play lefty myself it's it's so disorienting, I guess, when you first start. I, I, I didn't stick with it because I was just gonna keep playing right-handed. Yeah, just, <laughs> just imagining like, doing it right now, I'm like, oh, oh, that feels. Yeah, uh, yeah, just yeah, you know, it's, feeling like. But that's because I just have yeah. you know 15 years of muscle memory right. associated right, with doing exactly. it this way. So exactly. Um, we had a couple other questions. Uh, 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 Tone Wolf FFIO, uh, Greg wants to know if you know uh, why Wonderwall happens to be such a go-to acoustic tune. What is it about that song? This is really on the spot. I, you had no prep for this. What is it about that song? So uh, I, I guess there's there's two things you could look at it. It's um, for the for the actual chord shapes. Yeah. It's actually pretty stagnant. Like you don't you don't have to learn a bunch of shapes. In fact, two of your fingers never move. OK, uh, so that can actually make it uh, you know, very, very easy for someone to pick up who isn't very familiar with the instrument. But it's also so many people have heard that song and it has been drilled into their heads that they know that melody and they know the sound of it and they know how it's supposed to go, that it's not like learning a new song. Most people could just right now, go ahead, everybody hum it. Everybody knows it. You know, so when you when you take on a song that you've heard that many times, it's easy to remember how it goes. And when you right. can remember how something goes, obviously it's a lot easier to play. So I'd probably go with those two points. It's not incredibly difficult for the chord shape aspect, and it's sure. so familiar to people. Okay. Don't and, ever throw uh, a question like that to me again. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, 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 it's going it's to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, I know. Zekato Z uh, uh, has, has a new uh, sort of introductory question for us. Uh, if you were given a $500 voucher for uh, an online uh, musical instrument distributor distributor uh what would you go looking for first what's the first thing you would buy if you just had if you get 500 dollars of gear what one thing would you buy mm. does it have to be well, one thing because my uh, if, if you can fit you get you get 500 dollars because my, my instinct would be it. pedals like 500 okay. bucks like i would just go wild on buying a bunch of pedals sure. um that would be my instinct because I'm pretty set on guitars, okay. and but pedals would be the go-to for me. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a tough one. Um, I don't I don't think I'd go for for instruments. I think I would lean more towards the the effects line of things, or potentially plugins that can be used oh, for yeah. recording. Kind of going more for like, okay, well if I've got my instruments, but I need some more like virtual gear. Yeah. Um, virtual gear on, on the, you know, the high end of stuff that's actually really good can be quite expensive. Um, and it can really change your sound when you're recording is to, is to have some of that in house, even if it's in your own house. So, um, if you've got good instruments and good amps and effects and everything, that's kind of like the finishing touch you need to, especially if you're into recording. So yeah, I might, I might go buy some high end plugins. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm, kind, I'm sounds... kind of discovering the world of of plugins <laughs> and, and right now, and it's 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 a little daunting, but yeah, that's would absolutely be another thing that I that I'd consider. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, there was there was also a question about uh, if when we looked at the infographic data, if we looked up how many players uh, were using colorblind mode, we didn't look that up, and I don't know. Uh, we don't have that data. No, but, it's not so something that 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 uh, that we track that I'm aware of. Um, unfortunately, um, I, that's in part it's complicated. But the, the those accessibility options were actually added later after the game had originally launched. Gotcha. Uh, gotcha. And so the tracking, but the tracking design didn't change. So um, unfortunately, that's not something we're uh, aware of. But I play in colorblind mode. Interesting. So. Is it, is I'm not it, colorblind. I just do it because I, I find it more. Uh, every time a game, I, I'm not colorblind, but every time a game has offered me a colorblind option and I turn it on, I find it easier to read. Okay. Um, okay. So that, that's the other thing too. Like it's just as a general thing, try colorblind mode. If you're struggling with the interface and, and how it's presented, just give it a shot because that might help. Because for me, I said, I'm not colorblind, but maybe it's just how my brain is wired. It just responds to that set of colors better than the, than the default one. So it's, it's, it's worth checking out add that level of distinction or yeah. a different distinction between the, yeah. the, the strings. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's we're, we're, we are drawing to a close here, uh, but I think we can probably talk uh, a little bit about one more thing. Uh, Adrian, Greg, if you remember, what was the first song that you heard that, that really made you want to learn guitar? Rage Against the Machine, Sleep Now in the Fire. Okay. Mine. Hmm. I can tell you what band it was. Sure. I don't know if I can tell you exactly which song, but it was actually Silver Chair. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that was very, very inspiring for, for someone who is young to see other young musicians that have like made it and kind of in that yeah. like grunge sound. Yeah, yeah. And I, I can't pinpoint which one of their songs really did, but I just remember I was like in awe. I was like, my God, they've done it. They, I mean, they figured it, out how to do this. And they're, they're like my age. How did they do that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> and they did. And they had like a, they had a beefy sound. Oh yeah. For sure. For sure. Um, all right. Well, thank you both very much, uh, Adrian Kumale and Greg Sully. Thank you very much for being here today. Uh, I also want to thank Tim Porter for sending us uh, two very excellent performance videos. Uh, I want to thank Brian Turner for his contribution to today's stream, in addition to his normal contributions of uh, stitching the videos together, handling the raffles uh, here in the chat, and uh, kicking people out when they need to get kicked out. I don't know if that happens. I don't <laughs> think it happens very often. Y'all are pretty cool. Uh, I want to thank Dan Ambrick for uh, running uh, the board behind the scenes. I'm sure he's wanted to say things uh, over the mic that he's been unable to. Sorry, Dan. Editor, <laughs> I'm here. I can hear his voice in my ear. Um, and now he's just, now he's just, now he's just, oh, and Dan uh, would buy 200,000 picks if he had $500 to spend on musical gear. Uh, I could have let him say it, but I didn't. I don't know. Are you able to be heard right now, Dan? You make it, he can't be heard right now. So sorry, everyone. 200,000 picks. That's a lot of picks. Same pick, different kind of pick. Same pick. Okay. That's a lot. Of, that is a lot of picks. It'll last you a lifetime. Uh, and I want to thank Ellison Cruz for putting together uh, this most recent community video uh, and everyone on the video for tip, for participating and uh, just being, being a part of this community. Uh, thank you for everyone here watching live. Uh, and if you want to catch that video, uh, the Carry On My Wayward Son community video, uh, that should be up very soon on uh, YouTube on the Riff Repeaters uh, channel. So make sure you check out for that. Uh, look for that. Uh, someone might post a link in chat. Uh, Tim Porter, uh, I think we've we posted a few times. Uh, if you want to check out his, uh, he's on Twitter at Timothus Music. That's T-I-M-A-T-H-U-S Music. Uh, his band 16 Bullets is on Spotify and he has a podcast, Creature Club Podcast, which is about monsters in Dungeons and Dragons, like this guy. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, we've got one more giveaway to do and then we're gonna wrap up. So we'll say goodbye to Greg and Adrian. Thank you very much for being here and uh, listening Have to a good me one. my mouth. Uh, for everyone else, in the chat, please listen to you, Jurassic, for your chance to win uh, this final Ernie Ball prize pack. If you win, you're going to get everything you see on your screen right now, except for the text. You're going to get two sets of strings for your guitar, one for your bass. 
uh, both regular slinky. Uh, you're gonna get a dozen picks for any ball. Those are the uh, the Everlast, which have the the neat uh, design. I can't remember what uh, what gauge we currently have, but again, those are all in the studio and will be sent out as soon as we are able to ship those out. You're gonna get three Spectrum Plectrum picks from us here at Rocksmith. You're gonna get a black Ernie Ball guitar strap, a package of Ernie Ball Wonder Wipes, and a Peg Wonder. Uh, all that from Ernie Ball. And uh, if we find anything else around the office, maybe we'll send it along the way too. Uh, but that'll all be later on. Good luck if you win. Uh, uh, you will be whispered to by UB Jurassic. That once more is Brian Turner, uh, who we saw earlier in the stream. Uh, and he will get from you your name, your shim address, and your telephone number. Uh, so good luck on that. And uh, if you're on the social media right now, uh, we are at Rocksmith Game, uh, just as we are here on Twitch. Uh, we are at Rocksmith Game on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and we are facebook.com slash rocksmith if you want to find us there. Uh, thank you very much for being here. We will see you again next week. Have a good one.